Part B of the tax return really is to do with your income from self-employment. Now, there, is, there are a set of rules uh, and they're in Tax Magic and also on the Tax Board website, which can be used to distinguish whether you are an employee or self-employed. Self-employed means in business on your own account uh, and the characteristics of self-employment are, you know, that you're not under the control of an employer. Uh, you can choose your own time to work. Uh, you bring your own tools and equipment and you carry the risk of not being paid, uh, etc. So there is a very clear distinction between being an employee and, and self-employed. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so if you are self-employed, uh, from a tax point of view, that can be quite good because it means you can get additional deductions. The test for deductions for employees is that the expense must be incurred wholly, exclusively and necessarily in the performance of the duties of the employment. Uh, whereas the test for a self-employed person is that the expenses need only be incurred wholly and exclusively for the purposes of the trade or profession. So the wholly and exclusively and necessarily a test is very hard to meet, but the wholly and exclusively one is a lot easier. At the same time, you need to be careful. Um, you know, there's a lot of case law on the meaning of wholly and exclusively. Uh, and for example, there's one case which is quite uh, well known. It's it's Prince versus Map. And in that case, a guitarist uh, injured his thumb and claimed for the expenses of, uh, you know, medical expenses, etc. This was in the UK and he wasn't allowed the expenses uh, because even though he used his thumb to play the guitar, uh, the expenses weren't incurred wholly ex and exclusively for the purposes of the, the trade of being or the profession of being a guitarist. There was also a personal element that he needed his thumb for his personal life as well. So you need to be careful uh, if there is a duality of expenditure that you only claim the bit that's related to the business. Um, so uh, uh, RCT is mentioned here under the uh, trade or profession as well. Uh, so if you're a contractor, uh, you have to make that clear. Um, you know, that's uh, conducting um, relevant operations as they call it, um, forestry or construction or meat processing. Um, and then you, you revenue, the figure revenue you want to know is your tax adjusted profit or loss. And your tax adjusted profit or loss is your profit per the accounts. Uh, after making any uh, addbacks, etc., um, you can also get a deduction for uh, capital allowances, uh, which in the accounting language is called depreciation. But capital allowances are are fairly restricted. Uh, you can only really get capital allowances on plant and machinery used in your trade or profession, and these would be equipment and office uh, furniture, etc. You can also get capital allowances for industrial buildings, and these are you know, a f for example, a factory that's actually used to make products, uh, uh, patents, uh, and also <clears throat> for commercial properties within the living city initiative areas uh, also carry capital allowances. If you have losses, um, you can offset a, a trading loss against other income, including rental income and even uh, PAYE income. So if you have a person who's <clears throat> carrying on a trade uh, of, um, we'll say, for example, some kind of hobby trade, um, you know, earning, say, 20,000 a year from uh, a home business, uh, a hustle type uh, self-operation, and say it's losing money, then the, the loss from that uh, trade can potentially be offset against income from a job. And quite often, that's one of the reasons why when somebody's starting in business, they might choose to start in business as a sole trader and continue on as an employee in order to be able to offset the losses from the sole trade against the employment income. Uh, whereas if they were to start as a company, then that ability wouldn't be there. You wouldn't be able to offset the losses from the company. So most trades do usually incur losses in the first year, year or two. So that's a useful tax tip for you there. Just, you know, if somebody starting in business quite often it makes sense to do it as a sole trader, particularly if they're carrying on the employment for a year or two.
So capital allowances, industrial buildings, you don't get industrial buildings allowances for, um, you know, uh, you, you can get them for hotels, but you don't get industrial buildings allowances for, you know, things like car parks or just land in itself. It has to be used for productive uh, factory type purposes.